I actually traditionally don't even begin until I've met the actors, but um, I thought I would probably make an, it should make an exception given that rehearsal times in, 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 in the English speaking world are much shorter than they are in the, in the European world that I've become used to. Um, so it was probably prudent to have <laughs> a little bit of text and Billy was, wanted to start thinking about what it was that she was doing, which is absolutely right as well. I wrote what ended up being probably about 30 pages and I don't know how long the play is now, but it was probably the first, it was one scene per actor. I knew that I had, I'd cast all of the actors um, in roles that weren't written yet. I had imagined what kind of archetypes I needed. I needed certain kinds of, of figures of, of, of femininity that she would compare herself to and I needed essentially two versions of, of masculinity for her to kind of struggle with. The rehearsal process was, uh, you know, new ground for me. I'd never worked in that way before. I'd never, um, our director would sort of sit down with us and we'd talk about themes sort of surrounding the play and how that sits currently and things that had happened to us or how you know parts of the story had possibly affected our lives if so or our friends lives and it was very sort of therapeutic in that way it felt very collaborative um, but it was really just weeks of conversation and Simon would kind of go off every couple of days and come in with a handful of pages of script and um, and I get very nervous <laughs> and think, when will this be a full script? <laughs> and then we discussed a lot what, what scenes we'd be interested in seeing, what, what we feel is important in, in the original myth that Lorca had created. What are the contemporary issues that we have that can feel parallel to, to the, the argument of the original text? Yeah, it was really unprecedented for me. I'd never worked in that way before, so it was... Um it was, it's a massive leap of faith, but I really, really trusted Simon. He's very convicted as a man and as a director, and I just sort of went with it. It's a process that you can sort of rally against, or you can just jump on board and hope that it works. Um, and I think we all just, just went, let's just go for it the level of spontaneity that you see in the performances is very much related to the fact that you've got hardly any um, uh, repetition or program in your m mind of what you do physically and what you say. So the, so the, the story is something you know, but the, the encounter that you have with the other actor is a surprise. And it almost only ever ha has happened in front of an audience. And the audience reacting differently every time means that it's always going to feel different there. My feeling is often in rehearsals, people over-rehearse the actual scene. You should rehearse, of course, what you say to each other, the rhythm of how you do it, the colour of the thing, your character, all of these things, but it shouldn't be related, for me, too much to the finished product. It should be related to an abstracted version of the essence of it. So that the finished product, which is of course never finished because it's new every night, is only ever happening and it's only ever a spontaneous encounter between two people who are kind of surprised that they've ended up opposite each other and just start talking because they know that this is the bit where they should say that thing but really don't know how it's supposed to be. Uh, and all of the joy of the human minutiae that you get out of that is what makes the audience forget that they're watching a play.